Kuali Yoali. Saludos a todos. Good evening. Um, thank you all so much for, for being present, for having me. Um, I, uh, yeah, I'm grateful. I, my, my people are the Mexica peoples of Mexico Tenochtitlan. Um, our nation is on the southern side of, of the human-made border um, between the United States and Mexico. And um, yeah, I just want to give a shout out to the organizers, um, all the youth doing incredible work that have helped you know, make events like this possible. And yeah, to really just the people that are on the ground doing this work every single day. Um, and I think I've I've been a part of, of the climate movement and in these spaces for a long time. Um, and at the same time, like none of this would be possible. The, the, the momentum that we are seeing of, of young people taking to the streets at such a global level to demand um, justice for, for our communities, for our people, for our climate, for our, for our black kin, for our indigenous kin. Um, that's possible because of the folks that are doing that work you know, on a daily basis. And I think uh, when we talk about water, that is a, uh, an issue that in, in a, a part of our lives that, that connects us so deeply. So I'm grateful to be here to share a little bit of, you know, just a, a couple words with y'all. Um, and I wanted to share, yeah, a verse um, of a song of a project I recently released. And um, yeah, we'll start with that. And I'm excited to open it up too and see like what questions or ideas or thoughts anybody has. I know this has been an incredible event. and. Um, so excited to, to open it up to the youth specifically, but um, started off with the verse. Uh, yeah. Life, a series of moments, may I borrow one of yours. I promise to use it wisely. And I'm honest more than I'm timely. Searching is where you'll find me. I'm searching for more than answers. I'm searching for more solutions, searching the sky for stars, disguised by all the pollution. I'm searching my mind for truth, buried in my excuses. I'm sick of the lack of balance. I'm sick of not dreaming lucid. I'm sick of feeling so sick inside. The whole world is sick unless you live in the lie. So far from the future, but I feel I've arrived and I'm up to the night. Your perception of me is set, but I'm different inside. I fly underwater, I swim in the sky. Clandestino had to live in disguise. When I'm closest to falling is when I'm feeling alive. When I'm furthest from knowing is when I'm falling in love. This is a response to the call of the wild. It's been calling for a while now. Humans foolish to think we'd ever conquer the wild. Rivers outrun the roads by the furthest of miles. I feel every breath like it's lasted a lifetime. Cities rise and fall through the ages. Everything fade, everything dust, everything changes. History is so much more than the scripture that's spilled on the page. The stories in the eyes of the children are ancient. We wouldn't be human if living was painless. I believe it took more than evolution to make us the death of the sacred. I'm here now like I've always been, never alone. The creator wrote these stories in the sky so someone could follow it home. Thank y'all. Um, again, I just want to shout out <clears throat> the folks um, for putting on this event and for everybody who, you know, help hold space to make this happen. Everybody showing up, all the youth on the line too. I know, I know this stuff can be difficult to gather in the same way the, uh, via these digital platforms, but we here, we out here and um, still sharing the stories and the message. Um, so grateful to be a part of that. But yeah, I think we have, we have some time to, to open it up, um, kind of an open type of dialogue. Um, I know that there's been a lot of great stuff happening throughout the event and um, pass it over to, to the youth, particularly um, who want to share or ask questions or, um, I don't know, put forth ideas like how it is the vibe is. So I encourage y'all to, to speak up and um, let me know what y'all are feeling. And then also questions for, for the work that I've been involved in or Earth Guardians or the music kind of at any level. Pass it back over to y'all. And if one of the facilitators wanna, wanna open it up in more of a specific way, like please feel free, go ahead. Ooh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. That was really beautiful. I think we just had a question drop in our chat box about what um, what the Earth Guardian's goals has been this past year. Um, mm -hmm. 
And if you could speak yeah. to that, maybe speak to how how uh, things have shifted through COVID times and whatnot. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, for, for sure. Feel free to, to drop questions in the chat. Um, my mom started this organization called Earth Guardians in the 90s. As originally it was it was an accredited high school, actually it was a high school, it was an educational um, community uh, that brought together a bunch of kids on the island of, of Maui, Hawaii, um, to learn, to teach, to, to be involved in environmental work. Um, more importantly, the vision was to create a platform and a space for young leaders to have their voices shared and heard um, through a variety of different platforms, right? And as we have seen, um, time and time again, like the creative arts are just as relevant of a contribution to movement spaces as um, as organizing or as, you know, speaking in front of an audience or as doing the behind the scenes work. Um, and so, yeah, Earth Guardians began way back then. And this year, you know, it's been around now for like, yeah, almost 30 years. Um, and it's actually interesting, I actually officially, um, gave up the title of, of youth director this year. And it was good, it, it felt like really, really good to, to let go of that. Um, and I, I really grew up in the movement and doing the work and, and I'm still very close. I'm still on the board of Earth Guardians. Um, but specifically this year, a lot of our work shifted towards voter registration, that kind of campaigns. People were you know working on that at a lot of different levels. The work that I'm, for the most part, I'm involved in at Earth Guardians is through our Indigenous Youth Leadership Initiative. And um, <clears throat> that work really began last year when myself and, uh, and a handful of other youth, you know, really began asking the question of like, what is the space that we need to create within the climate movement, within these conversations to explicitly, specifically um, like funnel resources and build a platform for indigenous young leaders. And so we had an indigenous youth leadership training on the land. There were 30 uh, young native leaders from all over the country um, from all over North America that came through um, and gathered on the land and we brought teachers and trainers and storytellers and you know prayed together and learned together and like, it was an incredible very powerful um, experience moment in time on the land so this year we continued through a five-week um, zoom course training bringing on a lot of incredible teachers and storytellers and, and uh, yeah so that's that's what I was involved in a lot of like just internal work honestly like I think another another question popped up in the chat is like, what are, what work are you involved in? And I've been doing, and I've spent so much of my life like traveling around and speaking about the climate and like raising awareness around these issues and talking about Earth Guardians and representing the organization that this year was like so healthy for me to just like, just, like read a lot, you know, and just like go inward and um, create a lot of music and like have the opportunity to like really reflect and understand like what is what is the part that we are playing in these movements and what is this moment really calling on us to do and how it, are we really being called to show up because i think we can get swept up and caught up in um in the hype and then just like our patterns and just the ways in which we know how to engage and how to play our part and how to use our voice um so it's it's like how how do we just be like as, as intentional as possible and i think that makes us more effective leaders and organizers and artists um, so it's been a good, it's been a good year of like, cause usually I'm traveling like all the time, you know? Um, so it was good to kind of go and work for a second. Let's see. What is the reach of Earth Guardians? Earth Guardians is, is global. Earth Guardians has crews, which is like independent hubs. Um, and I think 50 countries. So they're all over the world. Like some of our strongest crews are in, are in Togo and in Ghana and in Africa. My boy Mensa Tsidze doing incredible educational work out there, you know, mass reforestation projects. Um, my cousin Teotecpat doing a lot of great work in Mexico City. Um, but yeah, we have Earth Guardian crews all over the world and, and uh, that work continues to, to deepen. Like we're, we're trying to kind of deepen those partnerships and those connections with all of these inspired young leaders we have all over the place. Um, okay, Masha, what's good Masha, how's it going? Thanks for, for for helping me um, be introduced to this community actually. And, and the reason that I'm honestly on this, this call right now is through meeting you and your family and learning about y'all's work. But um, the question from Masha is, what would it take to start an Earth Guardian crew with Water Justice Lab at the sanctuary? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's one cool thing about Earth Guardians. Um, our work is very broad, you know, and, and so there are, are strengths and weaknesses with being an organization that, that focuses um, 
that allows our youth who are engaged to essentially dictate the ways in which they want to be involved with their, our organizing work. Um, and it makes it really easy for us to build partnerships with existing organizations. So in the instance of Water Justice Lab wanting to partner up with Earth Guardians to kind of collaborate um, on resources, on tools, on, on, you know, whether it's like tapping into the community or other Earth Guardian crews that we have in that area, like there's, it's very fluid, you know, and we definitely have space and are excited to continue to build with other folks that are doing, they're already doing great work. And that's the thing It's like, you know, so many, there's so many ways to be involved right now. It's, it's um, just important to see, yeah, where, where to not stretch yourself too thin. So, so inter integrating Earth Guardians into the work that has already been done is awesome. I think you could just reach out to the folks at Earth Guardians. Pretty sure you, you and the fam have, have the contact for either Tamara and, and Kelly. Um, but through the Earth Guardians website, for like any other youth who are interested in seeing like, where are the Earth Guardian crews? How can we get involved? Um, how does my work apply to, to these youth crews? You know, you can like tap in on via the website, um, which is earthguardians.org. There you go. Cool. I hope that was helpful. Any other questions from the found? From any of the folks on the tabs and on the call? I don't think I caught any other questions, but I think one of my questions would be that if if our youth on the call don't have, oh, and it seems that Sage Jim has a question. So we'll move on to that in a moment. But if 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 the youth don't have, I don't know, the resources or, or what have you to, to create their own chapter of Earth Guardians, like what would you tell the youth? Um, how would you suggest that they, they inspire uh, this environmental movement within their own communities, I guess? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's a good question. I think um, environmental work so oftentimes gets placed in a very specific, with a specific connotation and a specific box. Um, when in reality, like we are, whether we live in an urban environment or in the forest or by the ocean, like we are constantly engaging with, with the world around us, um, whether that's just community work or, you know, and I think, um, yeah, for us it's important to broaden our understanding of, of, I think climate and the climate crisis and climate justice allows us to have deeper conversations about the things that we oftentimes simplify, you know, through um, the way that the climate conversation and the environmental conversation is portrayed in, in media and even by big environmental organizations. Um, but it really like your community and the way that you interact with your family and those around you, like those are issues that are pertinent and like important and relevant to um, these conversations around like the environment, right? Because um, it's so much bigger than just regulations on fossil fuel extraction and exploitation and alternative energy sources. It's like, how do we actually build thriving communities? You know, and so I think there's a lot of conversation this year that has come up around police abolition and really looking at police violence and white supremacy and how those issues are like deeply rooted in our culture. If you look at the climate crisis, like the same extractive industry that profits off of destroying indigenous land and poisoning indigenous peoples and marginalized communities that are, have their homes built right next to coal-fired power plants or who have fracking wells right next to their homes like in Colorado where I'm from like those same industries that same you know way that that system is set up is 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 very parallel to the exploitation and, and the the commodification and, and the violence towards our black kin and our black relatives um, and those those issues of policing and how we invest our money so heavily in, in the police state, you know, I think it was really reflective of, of what our environments look like, you know, and, uh, and so I think regardless of who you are, where you're from, what your community looks like, you know, I think uh, uh, some good ways to start in getting involved in this conversation and this work and this movement is to like start to see how your community interacts, how you interact with your community and how your community is interacting with the world. And I just like encourage folks to like read and to like inform themselves. Uh, there's a lot of resources everywhere, whether it's environmental documentaries, podcasts, like audio books, you know, like whatever it is, like meme pages that be having hella like 
TikTok accounts to be talking about capitalism and like all like whatever it is, like whatever interests you, like there are ways in which you can absorb through those platforms. Um, Earth Guardians is one space that is like trying to help build bridges and connect youth to that. And I know that a lot of great work is being done, you know, within y'all's communities as well. Um, so it can begin really small, you know, like you don't have to go out and, and change the world or start a new organization. Like it's, we are all parts of this, this um, much greater struggle, you know, towards building a more like beautiful, connected, liberated future. And it's gonna take a lot of, you know, all of us like playing our parts, even in small ways. Um, and yeah, so information. And also I would really say like building relationships with folks, like with other people that believe in some of the same things or have the similar questions and curiosities as you, you know, and we don't always have that at school. We don't always have that within our families. Like oftentimes we disagree a lot with our families, whether it's their politics or their, how they view certain things. And especially sometimes with our elders too, that, you know, um, there are barriers intergenerationally like that. So like try to build, reach out and build those friendships with other folks in your community. Social media has made it so easy to connect with other people that, um, you know, belong in these same communities or, or these same ideas, believe in these same ideas. Um, but it's really hard to do this stuff alone. You know, like this event didn't happen, this work doesn't get done because people go off and try to do it by themselves. Like it gets done because people want to build together to broaden our understanding of, of what building a future together looks like. Let's see another question. It says, what can youth what can youth and environmental organizers do to expand this critical conversation between climate change and environmental racism? For sure. Um, there's there's a lot that can be done. And I think it's I think one thing that definitely should be done is like we should um, it's really valuable for organizers in the environmental and the climate space to just like understand the history of other movements and the current, like the the contemporary history of other movements like we're seeing the largest you know organizing force in, in the history of this country being around the protection and defense of black lives and like that has like really happened this year during a pandemic like we're seeing some of the greatest social movements in our history um and things are are you know a lot of uphill battles like are ahead of us but at the same time a lot of progress is being made and a lot of important conversations are like being brought to the surface and to the forefront of like our collective consciousness. Um, so I think in understanding, you know, the ways in which you're organizing and your work intersects with the communities around you, specifically, specifically I think black and indigenous communities. And I think, you know, for example, like whose land are you on? That's like the easiest first step that any of us can take. Whose land are you occupying right now? Um, and there's an app that, anybody can download on basically I think any kind of phone called native land. And it shows you like who's traditional territories and has links and resources to connect with those folks. Um, and really understanding how these struggles of water, you know, through a very environmentalist lens oftentimes excludes indigenous voices and indigenous water protectors and indigenous people who don't, you know, view these resources with a sense of ownership, you know, in a lot of cases uh, who are left out and excluded and pushed away from having access to this sacred, you know, element. Um, or, you know, in black communities, like whether it's Flint, Michigan, or, you know, Newark, you know, that are experiencing massive amounts of um, inequity and lack of access to clean drinking water. And that just is a part of life for a lot of, you know, black and brown and indigenous communities, impoverished communities. And you start to realize and see that like these conversations are so connected and you can't really effectively have a holistic conversation about environmental issues unless you're really understanding like the like the undercurrent of of like racial injustice and like exploitation of of the working class you know of people in this country um so i, I think it comes with conversations it comes with reaching out to other organizations it comes with learning whose land you're on and how your environmental issues that you're talking about who is already doing that work and organizing and not getting attention for it. Like a lot of indigenous peoples and indigenous communities who've been doing the work for generations, who've been getting removed off their land for generations, displaced, you know, had their water poisoned. Like, so I think it's a, it's a lot of work and it's like a lot of internal like reflection and like, am I, you have to constantly be asking yourself, like, am I doing this in the best way? And it's okay. Cause it's not about like, 
expecting yourself to perfectly off the bat be doing it but like how can we always strive to do better work in a in a more i don't know inclusive is such a weird word and in, in just a way that is more conscientious of our relatives and of those around us you know and of the land that we stand upon and the other movements whose shoulders we stand upon to do our work um and that's 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 all important so i think growing your awareness around that is really important listen read books written by black and indigenous authors listen to podcasts and read news that is you know told from an indigenous and a black and a front lines perspective from a working class perspective and i think that can help broaden your understanding and it's again that's not overnight it's like this work is, is life work you know especially for non-black folks and non-indigenous folks and um so yeah it's it's a, it's a beautiful journey though to, to be in in greater relation and in better solidarity with our with our kin absolutely hey brother it's good to see you here um i just wanted to uh I, something was brought up earlier and I know that you've been doing this for a very long time and, and I think that you have some pretty good insight on this uh, but we were talking about um, like activism and then also the trauma that comes along with it and I know you've been doing this since you were five and I know that um, we had talked I think we were down in DC and you were going through some really hard hard times at that point what would you talk to the youth about how you deal? And I know you answered some of this in, in what you've been talking about with, with community building and, and all of this, but um, what would you tell the youth on how to deal with the trauma that comes along with this work? For sure, yeah, no, that's a, that's a good question. Um, and I think, yeah, it's, it's different for everyone in how you experience organizing and the ways in which you experience organizing. And I think some of the hardest wake up calls for me and the biggest moments of growth have been when I like look back on how I've been doing things and how I've been interacting, whether it's with the public or with my own image or, and being like, I'm not doing this right. Or like, I actually grew up learning a lot of things about how I saw the world and the limitations that through my environment were placed on my perception of things. And like, really unhappy with how how I've operated and how I've moved and how I feel like I've let a lot of people down and I have and you know I'm really hard on myself too and I'm definitely a perfectionist but at the same time it's like this this is tough there's a lot of pressure from a lot of directions and just the work is heavy in itself that we are existing at a moment in time where our 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 existence as human beings on this planet is, is up for debate you know um and whether or not we prioritize doing everything in our power to preserve and protect our land, our communities, our water, that's like up for debate. And, and oftentimes I feel like it's, it's so far out of reach and out of our hands. Um, so regardless of what your experiences or how you're getting involved or what ways and you're tapping the movement, there's, there's challenges along the way. And I would say that uh, it's so important, yes, to build community and just to like, you know, do, do as much as you can just from like a really, like really check in with yourself as you do this work and be like, are you really doing this, you know, for the right reasons? And, and have you taken time to like ask those questions and identify like what you're doing this for? And maybe it's, and the answers can be simple, you know, and, and um, our motivations change and like we adapt and grow and learn new things and, um, but ultimately, I think just to being really grounded in your purpose and finding that is also really hard too. So like, don't put too much pressure on yourself in that way. But uh, I'd say like the the most help that I've had is, is when I say these things, is I mean, is like, am I really engaging in this work in a way that is is meaningful and feels like I'm I'm doing my work as being who I am and doing what I love and expressing myself in the way that I know that I'm here to do. Like, am I doing that? Um, and it's not always the case, you know, and sometimes you just got to like do hard stuff that isn't in alignment with like what feels really great. And at the same time, um, yeah, being true to yourself and like, I, that sounds corny, it really does like, but, I, but I've just like learned that, you know, you, you have to like ask yourself and, and just be in touch with that. And like, I've, yeah, I've just like not done that for such a long time in a lot of ways. So, um, I encourage you to like have people in your life that would check you and be like, yo, what are you doing right now? Like, why are, you, why are you doing this? Why are you showing up? Like, 
checking your ego, checking your pride, checking your, you know, your own, your, the way in which you navigate and relate with other folks. Um, and how, yeah, so, so there's a lot, lot to it, but like, I think having good anchors in your life to help hold you to that, where you can see your vision or you can see how you do this work and other people who also see who you are and it can help like steer you back on path. Maybe you're like, you know, get you back in a good place with it. Um, and like, we all have different practices to, to help like staying sane, you know, for me, like writing music and performing my art. And like this time of separation has been really difficult. I've been living in the city for the last month, nine months that isn't my home that I don't really know. And away from my creative community, away from my ceremonial community, you know, like that's all really difficult. Um, so we all find different ways to try to overcome that. So writing new music has been really healing. Um, and I think, yeah, like when you talk about trauma, well, like this work is as much about healing ourselves and our relationships to our communities and to ourselves as it is about healing the world. And I think those conversations go hand in hand. And when we look deeper at what we're experiencing and what the world is experiencing is like, yeah, it's rooted in a lot of trauma that oftentimes doesn't really belong to us, you know, and it's actually deeper than just a generation. Um, anyways, there's a lot I can say about that, but those are some of my first thoughts. Um, I think we got time for maybe like one more question. Cool. Just curious. Okay, Robert. What's up, Robert? Just curious about the story of how your mom inspired and encouraged you. Um, yeah, mom is a G. She's like just 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 her story and her life and how she has been through so much. Um and just continued to to persevere, to do and to really dedicate her life to the work for the youth. You know, like Earth Guardians and, and again, like I'm in a lot of positions where my relationship with my mom and my relationship with the organization has changed uh, sometimes in good ways, sometimes in not great ways. And um, just really seeing my mom like ride for the youth her whole life, really like, and just be so dedicated to it and work most of her life without getting paid for her work, which like you shouldn't do, you know, like you should always be getting compensated for your time. But like, it was a time where like, that wasn't a standard that a lot of people were talking about in the nonprofit space, you know, and, and people like her, like, just saw the vision and would keep doing it no matter what. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, she's, I, I think our, she is just such a, a, a warrior when I, when I think about what that means, you know, where I've seen that in my community, she is totally a reflection of that my mother is. And um, I'm really lucky, I feel, to have such a strong mom. And like, that's why I am who I am. And uh, at the same time, I think I've gotten to a really good place where we're, we're learning from each other. You know, like, I feel like I have just as much to teach her as I leave the nest. Like, this is my first year of life, not like really living at home. And I travel all the time, so I always kind of come and go, but like, this is my first year of life, like having left the nest. And like, so it's a, it's a new relationship for us. But anyways, mom, like, yeah, our mothers and, and mother figures, you know, folks in our life that sometimes play both roles, both parental roles, like, However it is, you know, that's such a sacred like connection. And, and when we talk about this work for the earth, you know, those are relationships that are important to think about and, and honor. And so I'm, I'm just really lucky and grateful to have had that. Um, yeah, thank you all for, for your time, for, for these wonderful questions. Um, and I wish you all like the best with all this, with building this community, with continuing to do your part. And um, artists, storytellers, songwriters, performers, folks that are just really good at organizing stuff on Google Docs, like y'all all are doing it, like, and have your part to play for real. And that's the only way we're gonna get through this. So send my love to, to each and every one of you. And uh, thank you for being present, for, for having me.